to today's solution session. We're going to be doing a little bit different um, type of interaction today. We're looking for a lot more engagement than we did yesterday. Um, well, a lot more engagement in a different way, right? So today we're really talking about, as you guys can see, a special thanks to our event sponsors um, on the title slide. We're not going to do a slideshow today um, in hopes that the uh, couple of folks that we've actually invited today will be presenting um, a couple of slides and going over some programs that um, they have to offer as resources for employers. And so um, this is also a great place for employees who are looking for ways to bring resources to their employer um, to connect with us and really um, get involved with the ecosystem of support um, and that they can really help to contribute to the resources available in their veteran affiliated employee resource group. And um, so if those of you who are here today have not been to our breakout session, I'd like um, to have Sonia introduce herself um, briefly and her role here um, at the coalition and really what she does to guide, teach, and train our employers. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Sonia Vasquez. I am the employee engagement coordinator, the skill bridge coordinator, and the military spouse lead for the Arizona Coalition for Military Families, the B Connect, I mean, the, the career navigation employee engagement team. Um, so I am very passionate about this. And the reason why is because it's really important to have someone in your organization as employers, as uh, organizations, as agencies that really truly understands what it is to hire military, right? To what it is to really support our veteran community when they enter uh, the workforce, what it is to support military spouses, what it is to support the military culture as a whole. So educating uh, yourselves are really important. And what I do is that I provide that education. I provide that assistance, uh, whether it is someone looking for assistance with a skill bridge program and they really don't understand the regulations or what it is. I am here to guide them and to really educate them in order for that for that program to be successful and for those service members looking to join those organizations to really understand what it is and for the employers as well. So that's a little bit of what I do. I am also the skill bridge coordinator. So I help and I connect with the different bases and I help the process go a little bit smoother for those service members looking for, for employment when they're transitioning out. And I am also the military spouse lead. So I love to support our military spouses. I'm a military spouse myself. My husband has been in for the past 19 years. And I am very passionate about networking and, and offering support to our military spouses as well. Thank you, Ayla. Thank you so much, Sonia. And uh, the first person that I would like to introduce, um, if she is ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and unmute certain program partners. And I would like to introduce Man from the Greater Phoenix Chamber and what types of opportunities that she offers in partnership with many employers across Arizona. Um, and so Nian, thank you so much for showing up today. I know it's hard, you're a pretty busy woman. So if you'd like to take a brief moment, introduce yourself and um, who you're with and then what great work that you're doing for our veterans and their families. Yeah, hi everyone. Thank you for having me um, for this great uh, conference, if you will. My name is Nan Pham. I'm the Workforce Development Manager at the Greater Phoenix Chamber Foundation, and I lead our cybersecurity and IT workforce collaborative. So this is a community of employers where we identify challenges and um, come up with solutions to strengthen the tech talent pipeline. And so what some of the programs where we have engaged with veterans, um, the one that comes to mind first is our two week paid um, cybersecurity and IT externships, which is essentially a two week paid program where we partner with our last cohort, we partner with I think 18 employers and 21 guest speakers to, um, and each person hosted a 60 to 90 minute session to talk about cybersecurity and IT related topics, um, talk about career pathways, required skills, their background. Um, we offer mentorship and mock interviews, resume, best practices. There's a research project. It's a really robust program to um, expose our community in, in the IT and cybersecurity ecosystem, and then really develop professional relationships between our workforce and our employers. And so we have had a few veterans that have gone through that program. Um, we've had veterans, uh, employers who are veterans who talked about some of their veterans initiative within their companies. And so I'm happy to talk more about that. I know we have some other guest speakers, so I'll just stop there and I can dive deeper um, in the 
in the discussion. Thank you so much, Nan. And um, the fact that you're offering programs that are inclusive to folks all across Arizona, um, it says a lot about what you're thinking about large picture, right? Workforce development within cyber and IT. Um, and within those roles, right, we have a lot of folks that are looking for a new career field, um, but there are not a lot of you know, opportunity in person, um, speaking from a Tucsonian, right? There's not a lot of programs compared to Phoenix Metro. So um, I know that you're one of our most uh, loving, you know, program partners, um, just because it's very inclusive um, and there is a lot of support once those uh, folks are going into your program. And I love that approach that you obviously you do offer. Yeah, can I just add on the, the Tucson so and, and Phoenix Metro? So our program, because it's virtual, it could be any Arizona resident or attending an Arizona-based institution. So we do have people from Northern and Southern Arizona, the people from Colorado and Utah who are attending an Arizona-based education institution or they're out of state studying. So yes, we are very inclusive to all of Arizona. Um, and I can even dive deeper into the diversity of our cohorts um, down the road. Thank you so much, Nan. And yes, we'll talk more, do a little deeper dive um, here with Sonia and really just how those uh, programs can be implemented with um, employers as well as with those who are career seeking. Um, so it's a twofold approach today. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, next up, we're going to hear from Rosie O'Carey from Raytheon. Um, if we can go ahead and unmute and um, put her on camera if she's ready to go. And we're gonna hear about really specifically how Rosie has done a great job of bringing her network to her career at Raytheon. And when I say her network is the fact that she's involved with every organization that's military connected and beyond. And she's keeping me on my toes here in Tucson with the amount of volunteerism that she's contributing to, um, to our military community and really just what she brings to Raytheon um, with that aspect. And we'd like to introduce Rosie. And Nate, are you able to unmute her and put her on camera? Yeah, I've got her on mute. Uh, there we go. Okay. Am I here? All right. Sorry, I was having a little bit of camera issues here. I'm like, uh. anyway. No so, uh, yeah, um, I started out just volunteering in the community. Um, really couldn't find work. Um, and I had to do something. I didn't want to sit home and do anything. I wanted to be productive. Um, and at the same time, you know, giving back to the community, but through those connections, I ended up in this position here. So it really does work. You know, I went to the Women Veterans Summit and there was a panel there about employment and they were like, it's network. They're like, you know, every single person on that panel was saying, yes, it, I got this job because I knew someone. So that's how I got my job. And I was kind of like, I don't know if I like that. They're still qualified people, right? Um, we're still screaming them, making sure that they met all the requirements and everything for the job. But I tell folks, that's what I'm doing now. I'm giving back, paying it forward uh, here at Raytheon. Um, and I'm their network. I'm the one that's going to help them connect here, right? So um, that's what I'm doing here is also as they're coming on, and onboarding, I'm giving them like packets of information from Be Connected, Arizona Department of Veterans Services, because like me, they didn't know about all these programs. Everybody just thinks the VA and maybe the city and the county, that's it. Way, way bigger network out here uh, and community support. Um, and you can get in as in depth and as, um, um, as uh, active as you want to be. Right, and you can take it to whatever level you want. Uh, but again, that's how I ended up in this position. You know, I'm helping screening um, uh, resumes, and I'm also teaching our community partners to help screen resumes that the way that Raytheon wants it. So when they come in applying for work, they're all prepped and ready to go. It makes it a lot quicker. I have hundreds veterans hitting me up, um, email, LinkedIn, phone calls, referrals. We're going out to tap offices. We're giving briefings and everything. And I'm really getting out there. We have our mentors. 
um, we have our own ERG, Ray Vets, and they're actually the ones that created my office. So all these veterans came together uh, to advocate on behalf of the veteran military dependent community. And they did so well that they helped create my office. So I think that's just awesome because I'm like, oh, wow, you know, by vets, for vets, you know, uh, with vets and everything kind of program. So I really, really like it. Uh, and I'm able to reach back out to the community and say, wow, we need these employment resources or training resources or helping them in their transition, right? Uh, the way the, the, the economy is right now, everybody needs support. And I'm also connecting them to grants. Uh, Raytheon has our own grants um, opportunities. They'll open up the 1st of July and they carry on until sometime in September. We like to give back to the community. I'm like, of course, all these programs that help me get to where I am so I could pay it forward. I want to make sure these programs are also right there in front asking for this money from us because it's just one big happy circle, right? A uh, community circle where we're all supporting each other. Employment, transition, emergency assistance, training programs, um, certification, and pipelines of folks coming in interested, right? It's not just for service members. It's not just for military. We take on the dependent spouse and I'm like, hey, I'll throw in the dependent kiddos, kiddos in there too. I'm here to help the entire military family. And what I love about Raytheon is they're very supportive of it. They're like, great. Um, I literally have folks requesting veterans because we are easy to manage. We're easy to supervise. And even if you are the manager, again, you've got the skills for it. I have skills. Well, see, I like to interrupt you real quick and I love where you're going with this. And I would love for those who are in attendance who are veteran employees, I would love for you to share how, as a veteran employee, how do you make it important from our breakout session, um, Michael, Bryce, and Tony, they talked really about, you know, starting that conversation. And Michael is the president of his company and Tony is not the president of Raytheon. So those are two different, um, you know, scopes and titles. So how do you as a veteran is the new hire, right? New person on the block and a veteran, right? You have all these different things going on for you on um, amazing attributes to the team, but how do you, um, how, what advice would you give to those veterans in the audience um, who comes into a new career or they're currently in a, a place, you know, where they don't have as much of a title as a president or a CEO, how do you make it um, important and how do you bring all the things that you're doing in the community, how do you bring that to your employer and make it important and make some noise? Like how do you make noise to the people who have positional power and everything so Tony kind of brought up a, a really good point earlier in his discussion. He needed an executive champion. And you're going to be surprised. We have veterans very up high. We actually have two retired generals, a male and a female, on our board of directors for Raytheon. And that's not only ones. I mean, we have other uh, folks up and down the chain. And of course, right when I'm talking, um, <laughs> up and down the chain of command, so to speak, at Raytheon in hiring um, positions, uh, supervisory positions. And they're the ones that are also out there using their positions to advocate on behalf of veterans. So it doesn't matter where you are, just advocate, highlight them, and then be proud to self-identify. I'm a veteran. They're like, wow, okay. And then they're going to, it's going to click to them. Wow, that other person's a veteran. Man, they're sharp, right? I tell him once, he knows how to do it. If he has questions, I know he will come to me. Otherwise, it's just going to get done, right? <clears throat> it's um, highlighting, self-identifying, right? And like Tony said, don't just wait for a veteran stick. Any other day, oh yeah, I'm a veteran. Hey, you know what? I'm going to go volunteer at this community thing. Hey, would you like to go? invite them, even if they're not veterans. You know, a lot of our supporters in our vet community are not veterans themselves, right? And I hate to say, some of them are even more supportive than our own veterans, right? <clears throat> but just getting that word out there. And of course, then when you feel you have enough support, then start pushing for little things, right? Hey, let's celebrate Veterans Day. 
hey, can we do a community service project? Raytheon's very big on giving back to the community. And of course, we're like, hey, if your company is big enough to have like a DEI office, reach out to them. They are huge supporters. Um, <clears throat> I was part of a, a veteran ERG also when I was in the federal government. And something happened. We ended up spinning off, and me and another woman vet, we created a woman vet ERG from scratch. Nice. So we worked with the ENI, we had our champions, we built our business case. And guess what? Out there in the community, I found my business case. It was all written up for me. DAV a few years ago, and they're always doing um, reports and everything, they had a report on why there needs to be specific women veterans groups. This was back in like 2016, 2015, I used that. And of course the person that was our director that was running DE&I at the time, she was big on cross-cutting initiatives. And guess what? The DAV's report had in there that the cross-cutting initiatives. So this sucker was all nice and polished and ready to go. I was like, I'm not touching it. So for a lot of these programs, when you're trying to start an ERG, you don't have to start from scratch. You know, uh, Arizona um, and uh, Be Connected came together and they had an actual guide on how to start an ERG. And I went through and I'm like, yes, this is spot on. This is what we did. I didn't have this guide, right? We just kind of had sit there and brainstorm and talk with other diversity groups that were already created and we learned from them. But you don't have to. There is a guide and I'm going to be including that in the chat here. Uh, but don't reinvent the wheel. Reach out to other groups on LinkedIn. Hey, how did you do this? Pull up this guide, right? Um, and then of course, get a nice support system. Get enough volunteers that are gonna help support and keep this program going. I mean, I relocated out here. Um, <clears throat> my co-chair for my veterans group, she got deployed to a war zone. So both of us gone, nobody took it over, it kind of fell, right? We tried to get some folks in to take it over and everything before we left. They weren't as passionate. So you, you gotta make sure that, you know, the folks that you have there supporting your group are passionate and they're gonna keep it up. And, and try to get new folks in, because I'm gonna tell you, you know, you're gonna have people that are running these programs and they're gonna burn out, rotate them through, okay? Don't reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of guides out there to do that. Thank you so much, Rosie. And I love the fact that, and I, and I appreciate you putting that into the chat for everybody that would like to see that guide. Um, ACCBC um, has put together a really standout and very simple and easy to follow, as Rosie said. It's it's a no-brainer, right? Um, especially for those who are in an organization, whether it's small or large, and they're trying to figure out, well, I'm just a little fish in a big sea of people here. How do I get some attention here on this really huge initiative, right? And so I love, Rosie, what you did by, you know, taking that initiative in your former role and, you know, really creating that women's veterans group, that resource group, which, you know, unlike the veterans resource group, it doesn't have their very specific resources for us as women veterans. And I know that you're uh, very, very big about, you know, putting out there your titles of what you have accomplished in the service. And I love that. I love that about you and bringing awareness to the employers we work for that, and also to others, you know, looking to get into um, employment such as you did, um, that it's it's okay that we're disabled. It's okay that we're women. It's okay. Those are not like taboo anymore. We should be proud. And having a resource group that identifies with that and showcases that, I think that's amazing and a huge turn in the conversation that we need to be having a lot more in these conversations but also conversations we should be having amongst ourselves um, at our places of employment. So thank you so much, Rosie, um, for that. And um, I would like to turn it over to, um, to Rob and Amy. They are our partners at AZ Next um, at ASU, a really great program um, that we are constantly, constantly sharing with our career seekers as well as with our employers to really help um, on the career seeker side as well as the employer side, really offer resources and I won't steal their thunder, but Rob and Amy um, will also have a couple of slides just to showcase um, a brief you know, showcase. And then Sonia is gonna do a deeper dive into onward to opportunity. And then we're gonna kind of go in the last half of this discussion about um, with Sonia asking um, each of you partners, 
about really how that can be helpful to employers as well as to career seekers in the audience today. So um, without further ado, Rob and Amy. Thank you, Ayla. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? All right. We really appreciate you inviting us today. Um, first, of all, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Rob Bilo. I am the program director for the AZNX Workforce Training Accelerator Partnership here at ASU. Uh, also, like to introduce Amy O'Reilly, my colleague. Amy, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Amy O'Reilly. I'm project manager on AZNX, focusing on apprenticeships in IT and cyber. Nice to meet everyone. And um, Ayla, do you want me to share my screen? Yes, sir. Yep, you should have okay. access to share. Great. Let me know when you can see it. You're good. All right. So what is AZ Next? Um, AZ Next is the Arizona Workforce Training Accelerator Partnership for Next Generation Jobs. Uh, and what we actually are is we are two U.S. Department of Labor sponsored programs. And our goal is to develop that sustainable workforce training infrastructure. And we do this by working with employers. We have over 60 industry partners that we team with to identify what skills are needed out there in the current workforce. And then we design training programs, uh, which can be anything from uh, apprenticeships to standard internships, train to hire programs, boot camps, simulated work experiences, all intended to really kind of create the talent solutions that Arizona and the region, and in fact, the entire country needs. Um, we actually do focus on the areas of advanced manufacturing, cybersecurity, and uh, data analytics. Um, our goal is not only to focus on those people who are just entering the workforce, but we also want to focus on people who are upskilling and reskilling to either change directions in their careers, uh, to potentially, you know, uh, advance their careers, get that next promotion, which is why we think that it works really great with veterans. And our targeted participants, um, you know, veterans is a, and their families are a big part of what we want to accomplish with AZ Next. Uh, we really want to focus on them because, again, what we think we can provide veterans is the ability to take the skills that they have learned in the service and then transition them into good paying jobs outside of the service and to get on, you know, to, to continue on with their civilian life. Um, because we are a U.S. Department of Labor program, we are focused on folks who are 17 years or older. Uh, they have a high school diploma or a GED, uh, and we are not limited to ASU students. Um, it's it basically those, if those two requirements are met, you can qualify for AZ Next. And because we are a Department of Labor grant funded program, all of our program or all of our training is free to our participants. So this also is a great benefit to our employer partners because we can offer them a low cost training solution for their training needs. Amy, is there anything else you wanna to add to that? Uh, sure, Rob, yeah. I was gonna to say to your point about not being limited to ASU. So a lot of the trainings that we're going to share very soon are, there are options there depending on your interest area. There's non-credit, non-degree tracks, or if you are looking to get a bachelor's degree, a graduate degree, there are some programs that can convert into credit. Uh, but all of them have a industry recognized credential involved and a lot of mentorship structures, um, networking with our employer partners and the community. So we try to build as many resources, not only in that technical minded area, but also in like soft skills. The net, there's been a lot of talk about networking and presentation in a workplace that may be different from being in the service. So we try to keep all of that in mind. We work very closely with our partners at, the, at all of these wonderful organizations, including the AZCMF organization. Um, to get these resources as applicable as possible to our participants and the employer partners. Just really quickly, I won't go through everything here, but I just wanted to show you just a few of the programs that we're currently offering or we soon will be offering. And again, what we do with these programs is we actually go to our industry partners and we say, what skills are you looking for? What do you need right now to you know, fulfill your workforce? And based on that feedback, 
we design these types of programs to provide people with those uh, skilled workers. Um, you know, just a couple of the programs that we've already launched that have been very successful is our business analysis fundamentals program, which gives uh, a, you know, a person who maybe is not really familiar or has a lot of experience on the business side of the, uh, of the equation, uh, that basic understanding of how to understand business data and how to manipulate it and use it in, to advance their career. That's a 10 week program that results in an industry certificate called the uh, IIBA Entry Certificate in Business Analysis. Uh, another big program that we're, curr that we're currently offering is our Salesforce Developer uh, Academy. Uh, this is a 15 week program that allows a person to, we, we actually are a, a, a authorized training partner with Salesforce. So we use the Salesforce material and uh, their web platform to train people to be prepared for the uh, Salesforce Developer One certificate. This is something that's hugely in demand in the industry right now. And in fact, I've got companies lining up to talk to my graduates from this program. So this is again, something that's, uh, you know, a great program that could potentially be offered to, you know, our veteran participants, because it's, it's, it's something that we be, feel that they can take the experience that they've learned in the service and, you know, move forward with that. Um, Amy, do you want to talk any bit, a little bit about maybe some of the apprenticeship programs that we offer? Absolutely. So as I mentioned, that's kind of my forte, my focus area. And the benefit of apprenticeship is that it is in some ways, depending on the flexibility of the employer partner and can essentially be an enhanced version of an internship, but it allows progressional tracking of milestones, completion for training and on the job competencies. And a lot of that is a really good way to get not only the training and experience to get into a workplace, but also the cultural embeddedness with the company. You really have direct mentorship support, a lot of support and structure around your work tasks. So for an apprentice, it is a great way for to get not only the skills, but also that embeddedness and that awareness of that specific company and their values and the way that we can get more higher retention. So we have a couple of these apprenticeships. Some of them are um, tracked for current university students or current college students so they can get credit while they are getting this work experience but all some of these are also front-loaded training followed by placement with an employer so we are always looking for additional employer partners to agree to, to get, take on some apprentices for that short-term experience to see if they are a perfect fit it's a good way to test run so we have a um, IT analyst or IT support specialist apprenticeship which uh, that would be maybe one year of a degree curriculum we have various degree programs that align to this and then we provide supplemental coursework uh, that can go into a vast amount of IT related fields. The tech project coordinator one is actually a partnership we have with CompTIA, which is combining not only project management, which a lot of people are interested in right now, but also fundamental IT skills so you can speak the language of IT, function in that space, and then communicate effectively within a business in multiple areas. And that is a eight week upfront training followed by a longer form one year on the job uh, is our target for that one. And then a new one we have is the Google IT support specialist. So we do have the Google IT support certificate available, um, which is a free offering. And then you are able to convert that to bachelor's degree credit if you wish as a participant. So it's focused on the self-paced training that we provide additional structure around and then following completion of the certificate, networking out to employer partners for review, placement on the job comp competencies up to from 440 hours up to one year of work uh, with those companies. So there's a lot of flexibility in that apprenticeship space in regards to what type of model uh, companies or participants are looking for. Apprenticeships are paid experiences. They do have a couple of requirements on both sides for commitment. So happy to go into that in more depth with anyone who may be interested in learning more. Yeah, and I'll just kind of close this out by saying that these are just a few of the programs that we're currently offering. We have several more that are in development that we'll be launching soon. Um, and to our, the employers out there who might be interested in talking to us, uh, the, the, the great thing about our program is that we do have the flexibility to customize a program for a particular need. So if there's something out there that you're looking for that you need help in, that you know, you know, we can potentially put together a program for you, please contact us. I put our website address and our email address in the chat window, um, and we're happy to take any questions that might come up. 
Thank you so much, Rob and Amy, um, for really taking a deeper dive into those programs. And I really like the fact that, you know, this is a little, um, probably a well kept, but it shouldn't be a secret um, that Sonia has in her back pocket for all employers that are in the room that are our current vetted Arizona Veteran Supportive Employers, as well as potential employers that would like to become vetted um, with Sonia and our team, is that these are the little secrets that we really are using the platform of Symposium this year to showcase that this year we're really focusing on helping those employers in the room to showcase what kind of resources are available for veterans and their families, right? Um, many of these programs are available not just to veteran employees, but also to their spouses, um, their partners, as well as their dependent children that are coming of age. So we've got a lot of retirees that have children that are looking to, you know, start off maybe um, a non-traditional path and looking to just get into a career field and or they're looking for higher education credits. Um, so I really enjoy the fact that Rob and Amy, you guys are very um, passionate about being flexible. And I think that's very important for employers because a lot of the veterans that are, you know, employed, they're working pretty high ops tempo jobs. I mean, so to be able, you know, for example, myself, I'm in graduate school right now and it's intense, you know, and, um, you know, handling two children, um, two young children, um, an entrepreneur husband owns his own business, as well as, you know, being a program manager for such a intense uh, program here at Be Connected. I can speak from experience at finding resources to upskill myself. They have to be flexible. And so for the employers in the room or employees in the room who are veterans or military connected, I really love the fact that each of these programs are very flexible. Um, they are virtual and they do offer the ability for veteran employees to upskill themselves um, as well as offering something to everyone else in the family. Um, very inclusive. So um, thank you, Amy and Rob. And um, I would like to have Sonia to go over um, another program. And we do have a lot more programs, right? I did put our email address for Sonia and our shared inbox for career, seat, or for career I'm sorry, for employers, which is career connections at arizonacoalition.org. We also have an inbox for career seekers. So if you're a veteran or a military spouse or a partner or a veteran spouse, and you don't already have a connection with our team on the career seeking side, please go ahead and send an inquiry over to um, the career nav inbox that's in the chat. And um, we do have a lot more programs and we'll Believe it or not, we have a lot more programs, right, Sonia? Like so many more. They're coming to our inbox. We're having working group meetings um, on a daily with a lot of higher education institutions as well as chambers and nonprofit partners. And so there's just so many things as well as employers that are actually putting together programs um, themselves that are actually offering it to the community. So there is a lot more than what you guys are all seeing today for employers to take advantage as well as career seekers. So please, if you are a veteran or connected to the military at all, um, please, you know, send us a job us a little line over to your nav. And if you're an employer or you want your employer to get this information and become vetted, become a part of this ecosystem, please drop us a line um, to the career connections. Um, we do have one more program we're going to highlight. Um, so you're just going to do a brief um, overview. And then we're going to actually go into Nan's program a little bit more of a deeper dive and allow her to show some visuals as well. So, Sonia? Thank you so much, Ayla. Thank you, everyone. So I would like to discuss uh, or share the information about Onward to Opportunity. So Onward to Opportunity is out of Syracuse University, and it's a great program that I have been using for years to support those transitioning service members. And then I learned that it's also for military spouses, for veterans, right? Um, a lot of us can definitely take advantage of this, but the way that I use it, not only to support our veterans or our transitioning service members, also support employers, is in conjunction with the, with the, with the skill bridge program as well. So if a service member is transitioning out of the military and they're wanting to upskill themselves or they're wanting to get into a different career field, there are different ways, different routes that you're able to navigate that with this program as well, because it's a free certification that you are eligible for. And you definitely can take advantage of that as an employer too, to, to upskill those service members that you have within, within your organization too. Um, so if a service member is doing a skill bridge program, for example, they're also able to do onward to opportunity at the same time. It wouldn't be as a skill bridge, but there are different programs that you're also able to take as a part-time. So if they're doing a skill bridge, let's say nine to five job, they can definitely do um, onward to opportunity at the end of the day and be able to upskill themselves for when the time comes that they transition out and they complete the skill bridge program, they now have the certification and able to transition to that permanent position. 
So it's a great way, just like our AZ Next, just like the programs that NAN has to definitely upskill our veteran community and to support our, our employers as well. Thank you, Sonia. And I put a link there, um, which is the application. And that's gonna be, um, once you do an application, um, you'll see on that link, the eligibility that Sonia went over and it'll give you all of those, you know, the very specifics that we, um, we as veterans, we wanna know, like, am I eligible? You know, I'm guard, I'm reserve, am I eligible? Uh, veterans, what type of veterans? So all of that is on that link as well as an application. It's just an interest or inquiry form, right? So you put your information in there and then the national team will actually contact you and they'll figure out exactly what you're looking for and then figuring out as well what you're eligible to um, take in regards to, you know, at what point in your career are you at? And they'll help navigate all of those areas for you uh, within their training programs. And they're just a huge, just like all our partners here, there's just a huge amount of information there, um, programs there that are available um, for anything from entrepreneurism to industry specific certifications, as well as um, military spouse specific um, programs. They're very, very specific to supporting military spouse in their careers. So um, thank you, Sonia, so much for going over that. Um, feel free to go ahead and um, connect with them via their application form. I would say that's the fastest way to get in touch with them. We also have our um, individual program management contacts that we can also um, contact for you if you um, are having a, a little bit more of a question um, or a little bit more of a deeper dive into the program. We can also set up an info session um, with our program managers within each department. And before we go, I, I want I do want to add answer Sebastian Luna's um, not question, but yes, you are definitely able to take skill bridge and our two opportunity at the same time. Our two opportunity wouldn't be the skill bridge. So you wouldn't actually turn in a packet to do our two opportunity as the skill bridge, but you're eligible six months before you transition out to be able to take that resource. Yeah, thank you for for um for that because he has Air Force and Sebastian is about to go to Tampa and do a skill bridge over there. Fingers crossed that everything lines up. Um, and so, yeah, Sebastian, you could definitely, or get your PMP, you can definitely, you know, do the next step up and or in cyber and IT and take advantage of that while you're doing your skill bridge because it's not attached to your education office. And once your pool funds run out in the military, then you're in that six month where you can utilize this. So definitely keep using those cool funds, Sebastian, and don't pay for any certification. I think that's like the, the theme. That should be the theme for all veterans, soon to be veterans, military spouses, do not pay for an exam or a certification or a program before you contact us because we have a lot of partners that would love to offer those free or no cost resources um, and programs, right? It just takes a little bit of patience. So, you know, if you're up at midnight and you decide, oh, I want to get my PMP, don't drop that $4,000 on your credit card because you're impatient. Just wait until the next business day, contact us, you know, and, and we can connect you to those programs, those very valuable programs. And then we can walk you through, Sebastian, like your questions with Sonia. Um, very specifically, can I layer this and this? And each branch is a little different, right? Um, so Army, they can do things that, that Air Force cannot. So um, Army's got a little bit more of a blurred line in regards to what they are able to do in internships and what the Air Force can do and Marines and Navy as well, right? I mean, so Sonia is our guru in all things because she came from the TAP office um, in the Army and she's an Army mill spouse. So she's got all this knowledge as a TAP counselor and as a CSP, which is a skill bridge coordinator or uh, manager, right? So um, definitely we lean on Sonia for all of her expertise. There is so many things you can layer and she works with all of our employers to say like, hey, we've got this person coming in and they wanna enter into cyber. Can we layer this, this, and this program? And then you're gonna have this very great, greatly experienced person, right? Sonia that has all this experience, project manager experience or what have you and certification. And then they've got a little experience prior to entering that new career field. So yes, definitely um, take advantage of all those things. And um, thank you so much, Sebastian, for um, bringing up that question. I think that's a question that a lot of us, um, when we transition, we're not aware that we can do because we're so used to going to education and getting approval for anything that has to do with higher education. Um, and we just think we're only able to take advantage of one program. So, and, and Sebastian is one of our model uh, career seekers. He's learning French right now. And I always make a joke, you know, about learning civilian ease as a um, transitioning service member on our resume, you know, getting rid of the military jargon. And so Sebastian is currently um, doing a number of things, but uh, preparing himself 
for his um, ascent into the civilian world, but he's learning French. So kudos to him and his hard work and showing up to these uh, areas of networking and things like that of opportunity. Um, so Nan, I'd love to give you the floor and go a little more deeper dive into your multiple programs and all the things you're doing. I know you're always so busy. Um, so if you wanna go ahead and share your screen and showcase a little bit more of a deeper dive of your programs. Yeah, um, sorry, let me pull this up. Let me share my screen. So for the purpose of this program or this meeting, I will talk about our externship program. Um, is everyone able to see my screen? Yep, you're good if you just wanna do a slideshow. Looks like, yep, you can see it there. There we go. Awesome. So our um, the, the goal of the foundation is really through our workforce collaborative is building our workforce through community. Everything that we do is centered around community and it's industry led. Um, and so everything we do is also employer validated. They wanted to really get exposure or connect with the workforce directly. So we as kind of an intermediary work with our employers to build out these programs. And so for the virtual uh, cybersecurity, it is cybersecurity, but um, we also have an IT externship. Um, is really, it's a paid externship, uh, expose our workforce to Arizona technology and cybersecurity ecosystem, career pathways and required skills. We wanna help foster meaningful professional relationships between employers and emerging talent, provide our excellence with opportunities to learn from multiple employers across diverse industries. And then we wanna also provide some real world experience to develop their skills through team research projects, mentorship, mock interviews, and other professional development. And so this is essentially how it works. Uh, I like to share this just because externships are fairly new for some folks, but it will, um, it's held every for two weeks um, in the evenings to accommodate students as working and working professionals. So it's around four to 8 p.m. give or take, we might adapt um, per cohort, but um, we do a welcome intro and then every employer hosts a session, 60 to 90 minutes. They talk about a specific cybersecurity IT related topic. They talk about pathways within their companies, the skills that they're looking for, their background. Uh, a lot of our externs want to know, how did you get to where you are today? There's so many different pathways. Um, and then on the very last hour, we dedicate it to project time, which is all the extern divided groups of two or three, and they have to do a research project that they present to the employers and the externs on the final day. And so it's a really great way to showcase their skills and another great way for the um, employers to get exposed to our externs. Um, we have been evol evolving our program. So we did incorporate a res resume best practice, uh, resume LinkedIn best practice session. We did a financial education component. We invite the startup and small business community. Uh, com community. We provide mentorship. Um, we do other professional development, like a career pathway panel, mock interviews, some more guest speakers, and then the last date is de dedicated to presenting on their culminating research project. Um, for our, we're going to do two more externship, one cyber, one IT in the fall, and we'll probably add another session dedicated to business communication or some type of communication sales. Um, that's one of the biggest skill sets all of our employers talk about in their session, which is how to translate business and technology and technology to business. For our employers on this call, it's um, if you join, it's not you're not going to be there for the whole two weeks. It's only five hours approximately across four separate days, and you can divide that among your team. Um, and so we'll ask for you to join the one 60 to 90 minute welcome introductions. We'll have the externs kind of showcase themselves and explain why they're part of the program. Then you would host your session. Um, then you would provide a minimum of one hour mentorship and then attend the presentation and then closing on the final day. Um, and then we serve high school students, two year community college, uh, four year students, veterans, reentering mothers, career changers, military spouses, uh, master people in professional degrees. So um, it, we really do um, allow this or provide this for all different types of people um, to reflect the communities that we serve and live in. Um, as an employer, we do provide stipends to support our externs. Um, so it is $500 to support one extern, and then we have some sponsorship opportunities to support even more. 
Um, just a quick timeline, we piloted in June with eight employers, 10 guest speakers and 17 externs. And we grew rapidly in just a like six, maybe eight months. So um, we launched two in the spring cohort. So together it was 18 employers, uh, 14 guest speakers. And then we served, um, I believe it was 53 externs. And to date, we've worked with 18 employers, 21 guest speakers, and we've served 69 externs. To give you a little, these are some of our employer partners, our guest speakers, um, different session topics, including business systems analysts, data science, AI, machine learning, agile development. On the cyber side, we've learned about the basics, research, incident response, fair methodology, phishing and documentation. So each employer will have one of these topics or a topic that they are interested in, and um, they would facilitate that session. In terms of group projects, it really varies. So I just want to showcase two. So this group, it was one of our high school students and our veterans that was paired. And they um, did a, uh, I don't know if attack is right, but they, uh, they asked permission from one of the employers and asked if they can find vulnerabilities on their platform, which they were able to do. They um, showed us how they did it. So this is a video of them showing how they were able to hack the website. They um, uh, explain how to patch those vulnerabilities. And then after the program, they were able to submit a report to their to the company's bug bounty team. Um, another group was doing a social engineering operations attack on their mentor, which was Salt River Project. And so they did a uh, pretexting on one of their stations and it was, a, it was a really cool presentation to show you know, some of the, the vulnerabilities in terms of the physical aspect. And then building a diverse and inclusive plot, uh, uh, what's that pipeline. And so our last cohort, we saw um, almost equal female to male ratio, um, uh, really diverse uh, racial and ethnic background. We definitely do need to do a better job of reaching out to the native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islander communities, the black and African American communities, American Indian and Alaska native communities. And um, so if, if, folks on this call have a strategy on that. I would love to hear that. In terms of age, again, it's really diverse um, from Gen Zs all the way to really anyone. And then LGBTQ did have a few that identified um, within the community. Educational attainment, we have from high school students all the way to PhD. We had a couple who identify as having an invisible disability or physical disability. And then our veteran community, we had a transitioning service member family members, um, military spouses, for example, and then those who did actually identify as, um, as veterans. Um, we're building an online and offline community. I'll, this is just um, some quotes and, and perspectives from our employers, but I'll stop there. Um, and uh, I'm definitely open for um, any questions. I absolutely love testimonials. I absolutely love that. Um, it shows authentic experience um, from both the employers as well as those. And I love also, I'm a stat person. So I love seeing, you know, who's coming through your program and as a veteran who's seeking, you know, upskilling resources myself. Um, it's really interesting, man, for you to share, um, you know, what demographics are actually, like you said, it's pretty diverse, but I'm um, just to see what kind of demographics are in those classrooms, the virtual classrooms. So it gives me an idea of what the culture is like within each of those um, classes that you offer. So I appreciate, um, we appreciate you sharing um, such a really good in-depth uh, view of the multiple programs that you offer us. And um, I think it's a really great, as I said, with all the other programs, a really great resource for us who are veterans and military spouses and vet spouses, but also to those employers in the room. Um, and so I'd like to, um, turn the mic over to Rosie, who is not only a veteran, you already heard it from her, um, but also obviously a uh, recruiter with Raytheon. And so talking about champion resources and building up the, uh, the veteran affiliated employee resource group, um, I would like Rosie to talk about how she can be a champion. And Rosie, really specifically, what resources today did you hear about? Um, what programs do you think you could champion at Raytheon? and how, um, kind of go over that again, because you know sometimes those of us who are in an organization where we're a small fish in a big pond, how do you bring these resources and how do you champion them 
Um, and what can you see, um, what kind of value add you see from these programs that you saw today uh, within for yourself as well as your other veteran um, team members at Raytheon? Oh, well, uh, yeah, I'm already hitting them up like, oh my gosh, I need a briefing from you. Um, <clears throat> so here in Tucson, Raytheon Missiles and Defense, this is our headquarters. And we don't want to just, I tell folks, we don't want to just sit here and take up space. We actually are very big on giving back to the community. We have a whole directorate that is the corporate social responsibility. So they're looking at like, okay, how are we giving back to the community? Grants, scholarships, a lot of STEM scholarships and everything and such, right? So it's been easy for me to pitch a lot of this stuff, right? The only thing is, which one are they going to take? Because obviously we can't support everybody. Um, but we are very big on making sure that our folks, we give really good opportunities uh, to our diversity groups. And of course, veterans are a part of that. And of course, within veterans, oh my gosh, they're checking off who knows how many other diversity boxes, you know, when they're interning or hiring, right? Um, we are actually uh, trying to work here with FEMA Community College. Uh, we already have a state and DOL approved apprenticeship program, and we want to grow that. We really want to grow that. So Nan, uh, AZ next, please <laughs> come to us. Okay. So when we projected um, and forecasted how many people would, you know, how many openings we would have for this year. Well, I think with COVID people are like, mm, I don't want to go back to work. They're retiring. So we have way more openings than what we initially um, expected, which is great for, for you guys, right? And for us though, with everybody leaving, it does give us more work, but um, at the same time, Again, so many more opportunities for you guys. I'm trying to squeeze in as many folks as I can, um, you know, um, but again, using all these resources out there, you know, because it's easy for me to uh, definitely promote someone within the organization to be hired or intern, externship, right? When they have all these other programs supporting them too. Hey, he not, this candidate may not be exactly what you need right now, but guess what? In the next eight weeks, six months, year, they're gonna be exactly what you need. Oh, and you know, um, you know, uh, they, you know, it's Skillbridge, right? They're free to them. They're doing a cost savings there, right, too. Um, and I will tell folks, just because you come in in Skillbridge, you're not answering phones, being like, an, you know, what you think an intern is like. We actually have folks that are going through certifications as they're even interning with us, our own internal. Um, you'll see with a lot of job vacancies out there, you will rarely see where they require a PM or some Lean Six Sigma certification. And the reason for that is we have our own internal ones. It's good that you know that, the foundation and everything, but then we're gonna bring you in and teach you the way we do it with our own internal certifications too. Um, and those are even available to uh, interns you know, to skill bridge and everything. So then when you do apply for a job, they're gonna ask, hey, do you happen to have any industry certifications? So again, you know, partnering with NAN and AZ Next, it helps me promote these folks better. Hey, they're going through this program. What I'm also doing is I'm reaching out to these offices. You know, they have tons of IT, tons of cyber, we're going to be growing our engineering program here in Raytheon. <laughs> Hint to everybody out there, right? If you're trying to groom yourself, trying to do your research on what it is that we need, okay? For IT, Security Plus and up to compete for us, all right? So that's what we're looking at is all these programs out there. Okay, who can provide these? Because it's easy for me to promote these ones. They're already in a program. They're training to get the certification or they just tested whatever they're about to test next week. It's an easy pitch for me when I'm sitting here and I'm trying to promote our folks. So again, I love these programs out there. I leverage them whenever I can, so. Thank you so much, Rocio. And I absolutely love the fact that you are looking at it from all angles, right? You're looking at it from an internal perspective as a recruiter and as a veteran advocate or a military connected advocate. I know for a fact um, personally that you are so involved in the community you're looking for, you're a helper, right? And so the passion is there. Um, and I know we have a lot of passionate helpers across Arizona and beyond 
I mean, so I just love the fact that you're taking these resources and you're championing them internally, but you're also looking at folks who may not be a good fit and you're showcasing these resources. And it sounds like you're going to be right on, uh, right on their tail to uh, get in contact with all the folks here in today's, you know, room and really showcasing those to veteran or military connected folks so that they can groom themselves. You know, they can get, you know, those resources and get themselves certified or get themselves um, you know, some experience within the externship so that they can come back in six months and be ready for a position, which sounds like you guys have a lot of them at Raytheon um, with a lot of people retiring. So I really appreciate that look internally as a recruiter, um, but also we know that as a veteran yourself, you're probably thinking, oh, how can I take advantage of upskilling? Because we're always, you know, trying to upskill ourselves as veterans. Um, and I know that that's something that's, you know, on front and center for you as well, um, taking care of others as well as taking care of yourself. Uh, within your role. So yeah, I really appreciate that. And I'd like to hear Sonia, um, really how that, you know, you are an employment engagement coordinator and you are also I'm the skill bridge coordinator, but most importantly, when we have those veterans and those veteran spouses come to us, I want to talk about, and we've got about 15 minutes. I really want to change the subject from transitioning because we spent a lot of time yesterday. I really want to talk about those veterans and vet spouses that are employed at organizations that are here today and maybe attendees today. And how, how do you think that these resources or how do you currently utilize these resources um, internally for folks who come to you as a vet spouse or a veteran um, and they're just not quite ready for the employers on those roles? How do you utilize these resources and how do you think that employers can see this as an opportunity as well for you to partner with them to connect these veterans for open roles? We're not talking transition here, we're just talking you know, what are these, re how valuable are these, are these resources for veterans out there of all eras and vet spouses? We don't talk about vet spouses enough. Um, so let's, let me hear what your thoughts are and the value um, for veterans of all eras and vet spouses. So important, right? And if we're talking about spouses, we're talking about individuals that have to reinvent themselves every single time that they move, right? They are looking for this kind of resources. They're, they're looking for this kind of opportunities in order to grow um, in their career field or in a new career field, right? Because everything changes every time you move. Maybe something that was working for you in the last utilization may not work for you and your family in this one, right? A lot of family dynamics change. A lot of when you have children, a lot of things change as well. So making sure that you are wanting to get into a career field and you have the resources out there and the opportunities to really upskill yourself are very important. Same with the veteran community. These veterans are individuals that sometimes want to change careers too, or they want to grow within their careers and they don't know how to. These kinds of resources and programs are key for their success as well. And one thing that I actually wanted to, to ask the audience here, the agencies, the employers is what, what kind of practices or what kind, and, and I'll say this from a marketing major, right? That's my, my major. I'm huge on marketing. It's very important to actually really really attract that that audience or that clientele um what kind of specific practices would you like to see from those program managers from the people overseeing this different or this different resources and opportunities for you as an employer to actually take advantage of it it could be something as simple as a flyer targeted to employers because a lot of the flyers target the the audience right the service members the veterans the spouses but maybe having a flyer or something to really target those employers could actually bring those employers attention into actually providing the services to the people that are within their organization, like the bird groups, right? So does anybody have any, any feedback? And I'll give a few minutes so people can answer. Show of hands, we can go ahead and we can unmute them um, if oh, need be, yeah. I'm sorry, the question again. What kind of practices would you like to see from this program managers um, for AZ Next or for the Onward to Opportunity or for like these apprenticeship programs, right? Um, to, to target the employer's eye or attention. So you can then implement that within your organization for your veteran community. Reach out because we're ready. <laughs> we need folks. We are so open to it. I mean, reach out. We are. We will make uh, meetings and find out more and help promote you. 
um, to this because I do have offices that say, hey, I'm having trouble really filling these positions. And I'm like, okay, I'm reaching out to the community. Okay, who's out there giving this type of training you know, for these folks? And I can say, hey, there's a graduation class of folks coming at this point. I'm gonna give you some candidates, right? Um, yeah, veterans, I work in the military relations team, but I don't care, I'm here to fill positions too, okay? And uh, I work with Raytheon Missiles and Defense. If we don't fit you here, I'm gonna fit you in one of our other businesses. I don't care if it's Lockheed or Boeing. I'm gonna make sure that we're fitting people to nice good positions so they're gainfully employed, right? But yeah, just reach out, we're ready. Thank you for your feedback, Rocio. We also have Patrick here that wants to give his feedback. Um, good morning still, everyone. What a great symposium. What great breakout sessions. I was on the one before, and I'm learning so much. And uh, I am the military veteran advocate for Molina Healthcare, which is one of our Medicaid or Access Health Plan uh, contracted providers uh, in our Arizona state. And uh, that is more member facing, but I also work internally to help educate including our HR staff and our care managers and everybody about military culture and that. But I'm also newly appointed to the chair for our veteran employee resource group, which is a national employee resource group. And I, I, I admitting my ignorance in all of the VERG space so far, because I don't work with HR that often um, or DE&I populations, but now I am. And what I want to do is really turn those people in our HR staff and our DE&I folks into all of the great practices that you have for recruiting, retention, and promoting our veterans within your amazing organizations. And I think one of the best ways I might be able to do that is to make maybe a short list of contact information, um, including the link to these um, symposium breakouts, the people that do have some influence in hiring, retention, and promotion. Um, so I'm just wondering if we might be able to do something in a very condensed version, so an old combat vet like me can even possibly understand how we can potentially reach out to folks like Raytheon. And we heard from Michael and, and Tony earlier, because um, you just, you say inclusive, but I just want to say as far as the veteran space, it's so embracing. And I just want to make it easier for our organizations and organizations like us to be able to do what we're all trying to do. And that's to, to access one of our nation's greatest assets in veteran employment. So I don't know if we can make something just break it down Barney style <laughs> so we can get some good contact information and links to the relevant information. Um, I'm not sure if that's possible. Maybe it's just a fantasy, but I, I think that would be really beneficial. Would they be able to join the Arizona Corporate Council for Veteran Careers too? I mean, that's a great place to network with other like-minded corporations. Yes, and I'm also, I'm only here for a few months so far within Molina, and so I don't know their ACCV, I think that's the, the, the uh, initials, but also the veteran, the AZ, the veteran, um, oh my gosh, all the, the supportive employments, yeah, the, the AZ <laughs> veteran support, supportive employers, um, and we used to be the Regional Behavioral Health Authority when it was under a different name called Magellan, and we just did a realignment uh, back in November and changed names, so um, I don't know if our, our previous applications, you know, and our previous partnerships are still in good standing or what I need to do to re-engage if we're not. But I think there's some, some things that are still out there that I have yet to identify as far as all of our memberships. Um, and of course the pivot point is gonna be ACMF. Um, but I just wanna make sure that we are, we're getting the right information um, because everybody's got, you know, um, ideas of grandeur to make sure that we can support the military veteran and um, family population. And I just want to be able to do it the best way. So for people like me, um, it's, it's going to be simple. Like, who can I call? Like, none and those folks. And just, again, just a contact list, um, maybe potentially links so that I can have an intelligent conversation with um, our HR staff and our DE&I teams and things like that. Again, I don't know if that's possible, but, and we can talk offline because I know I'm taking up a lot of time right now. That's definitely possible, Patrick. And um, if you can direct message me your um, best contact email, and then yep. I'll get you connected with um, ACCBC as well as I'm making sure that your application for um, your uh, veteran supportive employer status is up and updated. We'll have our um, assistant work on updating that and get you all squared away now that okay. you're in your new role. So yeah, appreciate that. Just direct message that to me and any other comments. I know there's a lot of people here who might have something to con contribute about, you know, questions, how can we, uh, questions, how do I create a uh, veteran affiliated employee resource group or a women's veteran, right? So um, let's see those hands. Thank you.
or even if anyone has something that they're doing that's very successful, we love to hear um, those ideas, something that maybe uh, that you're, you're championing yourself internally um, or something that a friend or colleague has been doing in their uh, place of employment that you think would be a great addition to the conversation. My audience. I mean, Isla, can you can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you loud and clear. All right, sorry. This is Glenn. This is Glenn Gray with TriWest Healthcare Alliance. I really apologize. I'm having technical dif difficulties, but managed to get in via phone. Um, Thanks. We, we um, have been very involved with with both ACCBC and with um, our effort on our, our um, employee resource group in a couple of different ways. I, I think, um, you know, every company has got to do what's best for them and where their focus is. And I think the one thing we learned is, you know, there are a lot of different things you could do with your group, um, but you really need to be targeted to begin with. So it's great if you want to go out there and do all of these different things, but you really kind of have to set some ground rules. What's your focus? Is it internally on your veteran employees, first and foremost? Is it connecting with others in the in the organization? So we're doing a little bit of both right now, um, really trying to focus a little more of our outreach to the community through our, our veteran employee resource group. So things like the vet stand down that just happened, we had both veteran staff and non-veteran staff who participated in that opportunity. And that's one of the things I know those of us that are on ACCBC continue to want to impress on groups, even if you don't have a a uh, veteran employee resource group yet. If you've got uh, an organization that's involved with ACCBC and you'd like to engage on those opportunities, we see it as a force multiplier, but also just an ability to connect with other like-minded companies in the community to say, we, we support veterans, we support veteran families, and here's some ways that we can collectively do some good together. Um, but then also spending some time really internally and looking at when we bring on, when we onboard veteran employees, recognizing they come with a different mindset, um, but it's a mindset that we appreciate and we, we want to make sure that when they come on board, whether they be, you know, we've got everything from a, a rear admiral down to, you know, specialists who, who come under a company with different perspectives of, of the way business operations work. So we've tried to be more in tune with what we're doing for onboarding and for introducing staff to other parts of the company, because we know that structure is really important to veteran employees coming on. So those, those are just a couple of the things, but I, I, our initial, I think, thought was, wow, we could do this and this and this and this. And then I think we quickly realized you really need to be targeted. If you, if you want to be successful, start small and grow out from there. Don't try to do everything at once um, because it is, it, it's a challenge. I love that, Glenn. Thank you so much for um, chiming in there. And I'm so glad that you're able to hop on uh, via the dial-in feature. Thank goodness for technology, right? Uh, and just really appreciative of that reminder. And I, I can see this uh, because Rosie and I are very much alike in that we want to just do everything, right? Um, and so for those who are more senior in the room, um, virtual room, um, within this passionate, you know, um, area of, of improvement within our employment is really just taking it slowly and focusing. And uh, you're going to have the idea people, you're going to have the doers, you're going to have the people who can contribute feedback. Um, and so really looking at your place of employment strategically and thinking about strengths and weaknesses of your fellow employees on your team so that you don't have a lot of people sitting around with ideas, right? So I was once part of a group, a working group years ago. We had great plans, but we were all thinkers, right? We were really involved in the Tucson community and we were thinkers, we had ideas, but we needed to find a doer, right? We needed to find someone who was gonna say, all right, actionable items at each meeting. I'm so, I see a lot of people shaking their heads. I know that you know we're all in meetings, virtual as well as in person um, throughout our careers. I mean, and so I do say that, Glenn, that's a really great point um, as we round up this conversation 
really about um, as everyone drops their LinkedIn URL, direct links to their profile. So we can continue this conversation offline or should I say on LinkedIn. Um, and I really think that um, having more conversations about what we can do as employers, right? And really how we can be strategic about the very specific resources that we're bringing in so that we don't just bring in a pile and say, here, is, here are all of these things, there are 15 programs. Let's introduce these to the resource group, right? Um, the leader's gonna say, whoa, 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 you know, bandwidth here. So I think that that's very important for us to kind of round out this uh, amazing uh, panel of uh, managers of all these programs that are partners here um, today, just really showcasing that there are a lot of resources, a lot of different flavors, a lot of industries to focus on, and then really just um, figuring out the next step is figuring out where we're going to go from here. And I would welcome anyone to um, contact myself or Sonia. Sonia has put her LinkedIn there. Um, I'll put my one, my LinkedIn here in a little bit, but I'd love to have you guys interact with her over LinkedIn and ask exactly how can you get connected to the ACCVC. Um, and we don't have enough time to go really into what that is, but we definitely offline would love to um, contact anyone and have anyone contact us if they'd like to hear a little bit more about what that looks like for you and your place of employment and for the career seekers out there or just the veterans, right, that are out there um, looking to champion some of these resources, please connect with Sonia um, or anyone that you um, saw on the presentation panel today. And we'd love to connect further offline and really explore these resources um, to help your place of employment or yourself and your family. Um, and Sonia, I would love as our employment and engagement coordinator, um, three different hats, right? Middle spouse lead, all the things that you're doing um, and really our last session of this amazing two-day symposium. I'm um, really to go ahead and uh, wrap up and uh, any last comments that you have um, for our audience. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you, Ayla, for the opportunity. And thank you to all the partners, all the agencies, all the different organizations that we have here today for the support. Because if you're here, it's because you really support and you love this amazing community and you have a passion to really offer us in the military community, all the different resources that you offer and the different opportunities. So thank you so much. A big thank you from the Arizona Coalition and from all the, the partners and organizations that we have here. Thank you for our presenters, for all the different opportunities that we have here that we can share to our community. And um, connect with me for sure. Connect with all of us. Connection is key. Thank you all. Thank you.